Hello everyone and welcome to the official SWGG YouTube channel. My name is Rusa. It's been a very busy month for SWGT with updates and heavy development. And honestly, I haven't been able to keep up with videos. So today we're going to take a look at SWGT updates 5.5.15 through 5.6.0. The first update takes us over to World Guild Battles. If we go into the hamburger menu and we go to World Guild Battle Summary, I had somebody ask me, hey, can you add special dates from Siege into the search criteria? So I went ahead and did that. The next update line takes us over to the guild side under battles. And if we take a look at the percentage up here, uh, there was an issue where if the opponents had won all of their battles, uh, it would actually show zero percentage instead of 100%. So I went ahead and fixed that bug. The next update takes us over to the speed take bracket calculator. Now this is a platform wide change. When you go through and you add monsters, let's say we add in Aliyah, I went ahead and added a number up here. So that way if you added in, let's say, an Abelio and it's on the other team, you'll see that you have one monster of yours and one monster of theirs. I also changed the RTA text. So that way it's actually two rows, so that way it's a little bit easier to view. I also went through and added in speed lead on the monsters. So let's say you had, let's say we clear this, and let's say we add in a Garo, not Figaro, a Garo, we add in a Draco, and we add in a Bethany. Now, obviously, Bethany wouldn't be getting a speed lead here, so the speed lead would be 30% for Garrow, right? And then you can set this as 0%, so that fixes that issue there. I also went ahead and changed the tool here to allow you to add up to 15 monsters. So let's say you wanted to add in a whole bunch more of Bethany's, you can add up to a total of 15 on blue and 15 on red and see once you hit 15 on the blue, then it automatically starts adding it over to the red. There were a lot of performance updates on this tool as well. Uh, obviously, because a lot of this stuff is client-side rendering, I had to go through and make a, a ton of performance tweaks. So there's been a lot of changes and you'll, f you'll feel that overall it's, it's a lot snappier. Another change was recommended by Shizo uh, and he provided all the information for me. I did go through and add in the the PVE dungeons. So you can add in giants, you can add in dragons, the Lich King, um, Spirit, the Tormentor, and and the Punisher. Um, so you can go through and speed tune based on those different brackets as you need to. Another nice feature that I recently added, uh, if we go ahead and clear it. So if you go through and click, let's say I, I click on Aliyah, it'll automatically add the monster instead of having to make you go over here and click. But let's say we do Garo. You'll notice that it adds it to the bottom and then automatically closes the box. But now if I type in, let's say Draco, it automatically adds the monster and then reopens the box. So you can add in another one. So in this case, I am just typing and pressing enter. Uh, so, so it automatically adds the monsters. There was also a bug on here under total speed. If you went to go add in the total speed, it would just essentially zero things out. So let's say you wanted to add in a total speed of 210, for instance, um, this would just error out. Um, and it would actually essentially make it like a very large number, which is just crazy, right? Um, so let's say I do a 210. Um, another nice feature that this box has is you can actually do up and down uh, on your keyboard. And same thing for the runes if you want to go up or down on your speed from runes. I did go through and update the FAQ for the speed tick bracket calculator as well. There's now a new tips and tricks section as well as some information on performance and PVE content and special cases. So definitely have a look at it. Um, it's been a lot of work updating all of this. The next update line takes us over to guild sites. So I had somebody recently ask me, well, why can't I access any of these? Uh, and this is the and this is the old content for Guild Wars. And so platform wide, what I did was I made this an option to enable it or, or disable it. And I went through and scanned the databases for anybody that had Guild Wars. And I, I toggled that feature as turned on, uh, but I can turn it off by site. So if you don't want those stats anymore and you want to see those menus gone, of course that is an option. But just to avoid confusion, any new sites that are set up will not have this menu option anymore because the content isn't even available anymore. But for the guilds that actually had stats on it, I didn't want to remove your data. So it'll be up there for now. But again, if you message me on Discord, I can obviously remove it too. The next update line takes us over to the about page. So under help, we go to about. This page has been completely redone. Um, I decided to heavily document SWGT and all the menu updates um, and all the menu features rather. 
Um, and so that way people can better understand what they're actually getting versus not getting. Uh, so if you wanted to say, I, I've had people ask me like, hey, how come I can't get this menu option? You know, what, what tier do I need to actually have these certain menu options? So now you can do it by feature or you can do it by the actual menu item as well. Uh, the, the by feature, I did go through and update a lot of the screenshots to all of the new features and functionality that SWGT has. So again, a lot of time spent updating that page as well. The next update line takes us back to the SWGT homepage. So the homepage, I've been running out of space, honestly. And so what I decided to do, and I've also been finding that some of the videos that I've been posting and some of the features that I've been posting as well, they sort of fall off because people don't see the homepage blocks anymore. So what I did was these blocks now populate automatically some of the features that SWGT has and some of the videos recently, and the system will automatically toggle through all of the different videos, or you can obviously go through and cycle them through as well if you want to manually. And so that's what these two blocks are now been updated with is up on top here, obviously the speed ticket bracket calculator, which is very important, but obviously the artifact monster finder is of, of a very popular tool. So I didn't want to lose sight of that. Um, same for, same thing for the YouTube videos. Um, obviously we have the new video today, but again, I, I don't want people to lose sight that there is a video about, about friends and there's a nice video about the, about this particular bracket calculator, etc. The next update line takes us over to a lot of different features, uh, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pick on artifacts for now. Um, I've added the see it on YouTube uh, button up in the top corner now on a, on a lot of different features. So that way, if you want to see a video of how to actually use the graphs and what and what are the lines mean and so on and so forth, uh, that is an, a nice helpful tool there. Uh, you'll notice that if you go on to like, let's say the rune details, there's actually a question mark, which takes you over to the FAQ that, you know, walks you through all, all of the different stats and information too. So I've been trying to help build out a lot of these features to be self-documenting. So that way things are a lot easier to use and people can get the information that they need when they need it. The next update line takes us over to the Artifact Monster Finder. There are three updates here. Uh, number one, I added in support for increased critical damage. Uh, so for monsters like Fire Triss, um, she has extra damage on skill three based on some conditionals. So I, I did go through and add in that damage into her modifier so that way the artifacts will, mon will balance out nicely. Um, the next one is uh, Comptos added some new conditionals under the skill modifier formulas. So I, I went through and added support for those. And then I actually did find a bug on the attack. If you go to recovery, um, the recovery line wasn't actually being calculated at all, at all. So it actually would calculate a minus one, which is obviously terrible. Um, so I went ahead and fixed that. Now switching over to the grind optimizer. I went ahead and added in your top runes. So that way, if you wanted to look at, you know, all your top runes and then, and then how you can grind them, that option is now there on the grind optimizer as well as the gem optimizer. The next update line is a change on the back end on my side. Uh, I, I implemented a new procedure that will now purge um, SWGT personal player data after 30 days. That brings SWGT personal in line with the regular policies for SWGT. Uh, for all of you who do who, who know or don't know, if a guild cancels their subscription or let's say their, their payment fails, uh, I keep the site up for seven days and then I keep data for 30 days. So, you know, whether the guild cancels and then, and, and then they decide that they want to come back or if the site comes down and then, and then they have to fix their payment, same thing, right? Um, the goal is, is to keep the data for 30 days and then after that it gets purged. So SWGT personal and SWGT guild are now both on the same policies as far as data retention. The next update line takes us over to the setup under my profile. Uh, when you go through and click on the remove button here, it now actually purges that player's data from the site. So all of the ruins, artifacts, um, all that stuff, whenever you choose remove, it removes all that data automatically. Um, this was because some players were having some weird issues with, they were uploading JSON in the past and all these different weird conditions. So sometimes they just want to clear out whatever they have for their data and start fresh. That was a way to make that happen. Um, before I forget, uh, what's jump back to the grind optimizer. I actually did add the same filter. Uh, I added in the innate property uh, filter now. I added this on the grind optimizer, the gem optimizer, and the rune details page. So you can go through and say, you know, I want to look at all of my nemesis runes that have the innate property of, let's say, HP percentage. So here are all the ones that I should sell because I have an innate of HP percentage. But anyways, that's a nice little feature that somebody asked for. So I did go through and add that up there. Next update line takes us over to the monster collection. This page is a nice page to show you the monsters that you've summoned and how many you actually have left and how many you actually have built. Uh, so for instance, I don't have any of this unit built, which is why there's no number there. I had somebody say, hey, you know, it'd be nice if you could give me some stats. And then it'd be nice if I could toggle what star monsters I have. So for instance, 
this is my monster collection and then I don't I have summoned this unit but I've never actually built this unit which is why there's no one there but I also added in a new filter for summoned only which takes away anything that's missed so you can see some quick stats on just what you have for instance if I wanted to say show me all my four star and five star these are my are my total numbers um, I can just do missing for instance in this case so I'm missing two water four fire one wind and then obviously light and dark because everyone else is too um, but just a nice little functionality that I've added into the monster collection filter that was recommended by some people. And lastly, before we switch over to the guild side, under team builder, there was a bug that I had created where if, for instance, I clicked on the speed ticket back calculator button here, it wouldn't launch properly. Uh, it would show some sort of HTTP error. So I've actually gone through and fixed that bug. All right. Now switching over to the guild side, uh, under guild, under members. I had a bunch of people say um, they've been having issues with they've accepted people into the guild via recruitment application. And if you read the FAQ, you'll see that when you accept somebody from the recruitment application, they get seven days of immunity. Now, what does that actually mean? Um, I have an FAQ about that as well, of course. But essentially, um, immunity is something that I have to give to a player to let you accept players into the guild without having them purged out. So let's say you had somebody join the guild on, let's say, Thursday, but they're not actually going to join physically in-game until Sunday when rewards are given out and, and so on and so forth. Um, recruiting an application lets you add the player into your guild, lets them start seeing you know, stats and, and you know, all of the different metrics in, in SWGT before they're actually in the guild. So if I didn't add immunity, they would be removed from the guild when you next updated your guild member. Um, but I've also had some issues where... Uh, people were saying, hey, you know, I accepted these people into the guild and now I'm stuck with them because they actually left for whatever reason. So I did add a function for guild leaders. They can actually go through and clear the immunity. Once you clear the immunity, this player is now eligible to be removed. When you update your guild member list, it will go ahead and remove this player from your guild. And the last update takes us over to the SWGT FAQ. If we go into the Discord bot, you'll see that I have added in six new commands, three commands for Labyrinth and three commands for Monster Subjugation. You can now see your status on both of them as well as enroll for auto status. And so taking a look at what those statuses actually look like on the Labyrinth side, the status will show the start date and the completion date of Labyrinth as well as whether you have found or not found any of the mini bosses as well as the HP status of all of the bosses in general. On the monster subjugation side, the battle will tell you what phase it's currently at and then how many minutes are, are remaining and the total score. Again, this is all based on data that you have to pull in SWGT, so if you're not updating properly, obviously it won't show properly. So make sure to follow the guide in the setup menu and you'll definitely get all the data that you are looking for. And that's it for today. I just wanted to say thank you to all the Patreon members who subscribe to SWGT and to all the people that constantly give feedback about the platform. Uh, you know, it, it's only through your support and efforts that SWGT is what it is today. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. We all make SWGT better together. And with that, don't forget to smash those like buttons and I'll see all of you on the battlefield.